Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Adubato. We are pleased to welcome from the city of brotherly love, uh, Bill Spruill, who is the executive secretary treasurer, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters. Now, now, Bill, first of all, welcome, Bill. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. Uh, you're at a particular museum. Describe it. OK, this is a museum here on Spring Garden Street in Philadelphia that has artifacts from the Carpenters Union dating back to the inception, which was actually August 12th in 1881. And uh, I'm actually sitting in front of some artifacts on back of me is a trunk. I don't know if you can see it, but it belonged to Peter J. McGuire, who was the founder of the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America. He was also the co-founder of the American Federation of Labor, and he's also one of the folks that's responsible for creating Labor Day and the eight-hour workday. So an amazing labor leader, and it just so happens that uh, he, he organized and created the organization that I belong to today. You know, uh, Peter McGuire, 1881, the creation of, uh, the, what was the original name, by the way? Bill? United Brother, well, it still is the United Brotherhood of Carpenters and Joiners of America. Got it. And, and Mr. McGuire is part of our Remember Them series I do with my colleague, Jackie Chicarico. Let me ask you this before we move on to some other issues. I just want to help people understand. Peter McGuire important for so many reasons. Go back to the Labor Day issue, which I believe was in 1894 that he proposed. Like people go, hey, where the heck did Labor Day come from? That's McGuire. Well, there's, there's a lot of information and, and a lot of disputes out there as to who may have actually been the, the founder of Labor Day and the creator of Labor Day. But it was actually President Cleveland that uh, made it more Cleveland over Cleveland. But uh, what I understand after doing some research was in 1882 at a convention for the American Federation of Labor, which is the AFL part of the AFL CIO. Peter McGuire proposed that there's a, a day where there's parades and, and rallies and things of that nature for all working people uh, throughout the United States of America. And that's the date of the actual first Labor Day parade. Uh, the date it became an official holiday was after uh, President Cleveland enacted it as a law, as a, as a holiday, as a national holiday. So eight-hour workday, uh, really important. Wages doubled during that time. By 1903, North American uh, Carpenters Union of Carpenters had grown to 167 members. They started with just a, a few thousand, now over 500,000 members strong. So again, we, we recognize and honor Peter McGuire. Uh, and and P.S., inducted into the Hall of Fame, I think it was 2014, in, in collaboration with the Hall of Fame. Uh, that is Peter McGuire. Hey. Uh, let's shift gears, Phil. Let's shift gears. You've talked to a lot of uh, to us offline, and you've talked about this publicly about tax fraud. What, from Peter McGuire to tax fraud? I wonder what he would have said about tax fraud. What is the tax fraud issue, a, and what the heck needs to be done from a policy point of view to address it? Well, you know, Steve. Let me start by just mentioning McGuire again because some of the things he fought for are actually some of the things that are happening today in the construction industry. Uh, during the 1870s and the 1880s, uh, there was a lot of open shop stuff. Uh, workers had to work 12-hour days. Uh, there was what's called piecework, which happens in the industry today with a lot of unscrupulous practices. So what happened uh, recently, we've been advocating to try to change the industry because there's a cancer in the construction industry, and that is tax fraud and unscrupulous contractors. Well, just this spring, Berkeley University put out a study, and it's pretty alarming. And, and it's the most alarming study that I've ever seen to date in my entire career. Within this study, they determined that 39% of the construction workers in the United States are below the poverty level. And this includes construction workers that work off the books because they have no documentation of any income. But that same 39% of construction workers also rely on certain social safety net programs to help supplement their income. And on a national level, it was determined that this is around $28 billion. In New Jersey alone, they determined that 33% of the construction workers in the state of New Jersey are part of this group. 
And that costs the state for the social safety net programs that they utilize around $325 million on an annual basis. But Bill, help people understand who say, well, I'm not in the Carpenters Union. P.S., the Carpenters Union, an underwriter of our public policy programming to, to, to make that clear. People who say, hey, wait a minute, that's got nothing to do with me. I'm not, I'm not a carpenter. I'm not in the union. Talk to them. What does it mean? What's the impact? This practice affects everybody because it doesn't only happen in the construction industry. It happens in other industries. Um, it's almost like a, a giant gig economy, if you will, where contractors are doing large seven-figure contracts out there now. And this used to be isolated to the residential world and smaller projects and home building and things of that nature. But now we're seeing mid-rises and high-rises being built with 100 workers being paid off the books, companies dodging the internal revenue folks and not- So they're just in, not paying taxes. Not paying into unemployment, not paying- well, into how, does the, how does the IRS just say, I don't know what they're doing or not doing. Is this a top priority for the IRS? I, I would hope so. Uh, under the current administration, we've seen a lot of activity and Governor Murphy's administration has been doing a great job out there trying to correct this issue because the states lose a lot of money. Uh, you know, any local, county, state, you know, this is a domino effect. And every single taxpayer in New Jersey and in America should be concerned about this because it may not be the industry where they make their living, but the members of the Carpenters Union and other trade unions are under siege right now. And our way of life could change in the next decade if, if this doesn't uh, have, if they don't come up with a way to correct this issue. Bill, that, hold on one second. I want to be clear. We've got about a minute left. Are you saying other taxpayers, those of us who pay our taxes, as the law says we should based on our income, do we pay more because others are being paid off the books by these contractors? Absolutely. Workmen's compensation costs for legitimate companies are, are higher than normal because of people that don't carry proper insurance. Our medical insurance is higher because of uninsured people that have to go into the hospitals after having construction industry accidents. So it's, it's really a bad problem. And the Berkeley study, I would advise anybody that is interested in this subject to take a look at it because it's very sobering. Hey, Bill, thanks so much, my friend. Best to you and everyone. And Bill is coming to us from the Carpenters Museum in Philadelphia, a um, whole range of issues. And also we honor Peter McGuire. 1881, The Carpenters. Hey, Bill, all the best, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Great talking to you. Take care now. You got it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, Johnson & Johnson, University Hospital, NJM Insurance Group, Bank of America, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, and by New Jersey's Clean Energy Program. Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network, and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. Nurses, you rise to the challenge every day. We see you and stand with you. Your scientists, healers, rock star nurses, you give 100%, then find 50% more. For health systems to work, it takes nurses. And for 125 years, we've championed your innovation and grit. And like you, we'll never stop. 